gymnastics is so important to me and always has been when I was younger and I think it's such an amazing sport. It's so, many, so good for so many kids. Gymnastics is one of Australia's most popular sports for children and community clubs are thriving. When my eldest Matisse learnt how to do a cartwheel, she literally started cartwheeling the whole way on her walk to school. I like it because um, a lot of my friends do it and I think it's one of my passions. But at the top level, gymnastics is in crisis after a human rights report drew attention to its culture of abuse, neglect and fear. The sport has issued public apologies. Former athletes turned coaches want more. They're breaking their silence to ensure the culture finally changes. Well, I started gymnastics when I was five and then I went to the AIS when I was seven. They just pitched it to us as this is what you have to do if you want to be successful at the sport. Mary Ann Monckton went on to represent Australia, but her experiences of training in gyms over many years took a toll on her body and mind. Being injured is, you know, you being weak or not being strong enough or you're too heavy. You know, it was always a problem with you. It was never a problem with the coaching. It kind of makes me reflect on the Australian Human Rights Commission's report when they kept referring to the winning at all costs mentality. And I think back to the last time when we actually won a world championships or Olympic medal, and that was in 2010 and 2009, and then before that was 2003. So if we're thinking about winning at all costs, is this culture actually working? Our report really highlights that there's been an acceptance of a training regime that dates back to the 70s when the, a cruel way of training young children was introduced and became known in terms of a, a globally the way to get gold medals. We were often told like in the gym like not to go home and tell our parents certain things because they know that they wouldn't like it and that they would that the coaches would be in meetings and getting in trouble for it. Former Olympian Emily Little remembers some scary times in the gym, none more shocking than her final performance in 2017. She'd broken her neck, but felt compelled by the gymnastics culture of pushing through injury to get up and present to the judges. The fact that my health and safety wasn't like the number one priority that day um, really hurt, especially after like, you know, 15 years of being in the gym. The reason that I've decided to talk now and stand up now is because like what, for me, if this happened to another girl and she gets moved and she loses her ability to walk, it could be death, like I couldn't forgive myself. The global reckoning for gymnastics started in the United States, where a prolific pedophile doctor, Larry Nasser, sexually abused athletes and was eventually given a prison sentence of 175 years. Accusations of child sexual abuse have also been made in Australia. 7.30 can reveal Western Australian detectives have charged a 34-year-old coach with eight offences against two girls aged 12 and 13 in 2019 and 2020. The information was passed to police by a body called Sports Integrity Australia, which is now investigating 35 other individual complaints of misconduct and abuse against other coaches. It is long overdue and, and a lot of things should have been done in the past, but uh, in saying that, we only kicked off on 1 July last year. The funding and the structure in uh, rolling out the sport was only uh, landed in March this year. The poor treatment of talented girls in Australian gymnastics shouldn't surprise anyone. A government commissioned inquiry was held in 1995. Yeah. Sport Minister John Faulkner announced the independent investigation after parents complained to him about the treatment of their children. In the report, there were complaints against several coaches, including Mark Carlton, accused of physically shaking an 11-year-old. Another coach who saw that incident said in evidence he picked her up and just shook her like a rag doll. He was very angry and she was very upset. 
In the report, Mr Carlton denied the allegation and explained he had to take hold of the child as part of a proper coaching technique. Mr Carlton was banned from the AIS until he was given counselling. He's now back coaching in Melbourne and accompanying athletes to competitions like the National Championships held on the Gold Coast. Welcome to the 2021 Australian Gymnastics Championships. 7.30 asked Gymnastics Australia what counselling it provided Mr Carlton. It said its policy was to make no comments about individual cases. The sport did not say how many coaches with complaints made against them are still actively in charge of children. Yeah, it is a huge problem, but it's not just coaches, it's administrators as well. You see a lot of recycling. Moving forward, if anyone wants to move between sports that have been sanctioned along the way, that'll be published and, and people will be able to access that moving in the future. I think it's time the Australian public really understood the reality of what happens in some of our sporting codes. I still think we could achieve great things in our sporting endeavours, but people haven't really looked behind what happens to achieve those uh, achievements or those medals. And it's time that we did ask more detailed questions, particularly when you know you've got powerless young athletes who are being exposed to brutal regimes. Mixed feelings about my experience at the Olympics, being um, the youngest member of the Australian team that year, I was only 14 years old, and it's taken me a long time, I'm nearly 40, and it's taken me nearly 25 years to really appreciate what I achieved. Um, I always felt a sense of uh, I don't know, unease about it for a long time, like I wasn't proud to speak of it. Kirsty Lee Brown competed at the highest level in 1996. I was told that I couldn't weigh more than 45 kilos, otherwise I wasn't allowed to train um, due to my injuries. So I had a uh, stress fracture in my foot, I had bone chips in my elbow, um, I had a uh, torn hamstring at the time. The constant being put down, you know, and Again, I, I often say I was one of the lucky ones, but you know, being told that you're not good enough, you're too tall, you are too unflexible, um, you're heavy, you look heavy this day, you look fat. She gave evidence to the AIS inquiry about its coaching methods in 1995. Sick, it makes me feel sick. Um, I just, I, I actually can't believe that that happened and then a report came out saying all of those things very clearly and nothing was done about it. You know, no, no one really was held accountable for it. And, and that's what makes me um, frustrated, I guess, now as a parent is I know, and as a coach, I know that there are good clubs out there, there are good coaches and this can be done a better way. Kirsty Lee is part of a growing band of former child athletes now looking to shape the future of the sport. Gymnastics is such a good sport. I work for a great club and we put children, young children first, you know, we want to inspire these kids and gymnastics can give a child so much and it's just so important that we have this change happen now. I think that there's a better way to coach athletes, especially child athletes, to get the best out of them. And at the end of the day, if they're not cut out to be an elite athlete or an Olympian, that's okay. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.